This weekend, the University of Florida will host the number one team in the nation, the Alabama Crimson Tide. This game has been circled on the calendar for a long time and is currently sold out. It'll be a top 11 matchup with the Gators coming into the game as 14 and a half point underdogs. Head coach Dan Mullen will look to have his team ready to upset the Tide this weekend as the Swamp is rocking. The crazy thing is, Mullen was not the primary choice for the head coaching job back in 2017. Let's go back and take a look at a coaching search that lasted 28 days that saw the front runner back out at the last minute and the previous coach ousted over a crazy claim. Let's take a look at the coaching search that turned the Florida Gators football program around. Before we look at the Gators in 2017, let's go back to 2010 when Urban Meyer was the head coach. Meyer decided to retire as the Gators head coach due to health reasons and because he wanted to spend more time with his family. Within weeks of leaving the Gators, he was traveling the country working for ESPN before accepting his quote unquote dream job at Ohio State. The man hired to replace Meyer in Gainesville, Will Muschamp. At the time, Muschamp was the defensive coordinator at Texas and was named the coach in waiting at Texas. One Bleacher Report article written four years later described the hire as impulsive. At the time, Florida had all the momentum in the world. They had won the national title in 2006 and 2008 and had gone 13-1 and winning the Sugar Bowl in 2009. Muschamp neglected the offense and ran a smash mouth defense. The Gators went 7-6 and the first year and 11-2 and the second year, but that was the high point for the Muschamp era. Then they would go 4-8 in 2013 and in 2014 after starting 6-5, and Muschamp was canned. He had hired three different offensive coordinators in four years. Enter Jim McElwain, the man who was hired to fix the offense. McElwain had won the national title as an offensive coordinator at Alabama and turned around the Colorado State football program, leading them to a 10-2 record in 2014. In his first season, McElwain was unable to hold a spring scrimmage due to the lack of able-bodied offensive linemen and playmakers were sparse across the offense. That did not stop the Gators from starting 6-0 with redshirt freshman quarterback Will Greer manning the helm. Then Greer would fail a drug test and get suspended for a year. The Gators were still able to finish the year with 10 wins and win the SEC East, losing to the eventual national champions, the Alabama Crimson Tide. Then there was drama late in the year when it was announced Will Greer was transferring and a narrative started that McWayne was not recruiting well enough. McWayne started making excuses with a Saturday Down South article writing, True to his form at Florida, McElwain spoke with bluster and great volume about how facilities were crushing the Gators in recruiting, but even as Florida's Administration and Athletic Association began to cave to his demands about bulking up support staff, building an indoor practice facility, fixing the weight room, and building a new football facility, blue chips were slow to sign. McElwain signed only 14 four- or five-star recruits his first two seasons on campus. The following year, the Gators won nine games in the SEC East, but were crushed by in-state rivals Florida State and beaten the SEC Championship game 54-16 by Alabama. McWayne fought with the university officials questioning their commitment after the Outback Bowl win. The culture had cratered in the Gators program as players left the team, players were suspended for a credit card scandal, and some players worked out off campus away from the team's strength staff. The Gators got off to a 3-3 start in 2017 and McWayne unpromptly suggested his players and his own family had received death threats but was unable to provide substantial evidence of such threats. What McElwain had done was create an avenue for the university to part ways with him on October 29th. After a 42-7 loss to Georgia, he told the press, I know what I was brought here to do. We haven't been good on offense. I get it. We've won a few games but haven't won enough. Haven't won a championship. That's real. That's life. That is this business. And I take full responsibility for all of it. Florida had a list of candidates looking to help change the culture at their school from Dan Mullen to Chip Kelly to even Scott Frost. Scott Strickland told Sports Illustrated nearly four years after the coaching search, I tried really hard to find alternatives. I was really hoping Chip would be interested because I didn't want to hire Mississippi State's coach. The next 28 days, Strickland and the athletic department would be a passenger on a roller coaster ride as they looked for a head coach to change their program. But why did Strickland not want to look at the Mississippi State coach right away? Even the president of Florida, Kent Futch, who usually distanced himself from athletic-related affairs, thought the guy was a great choice. Well, Strickland is a native of Jackson, Mississippi, and a Mississippi State graduate. He even served as the athletic director for the Bulldogs from 2010 
up until 2016 when he left for the Florida job. His oldest daughter attends Mississippi State and he still holds season tickets to Mississippi State, mostly used by his family members. His parents, his sister, and his brother all graduated from Mississippi State. While he was the athletic director at Mississippi State, he fought the SEC to legalize the program's beloved artificial noisemaker, cowbells, and help create their catchphrase, Hail State. As an associate AD in 2008, he was the member of a three-person search committee that eventually hired Bulldogs head coach, the offensive coordinator at Florida at the time, Dan Mullen. The Dan Mullen name popped right into his head during the first head coaching search, but he explained, As soon as I had that thought, the Mississippi State part of that made it seem so challenging. It was hard to leave Mississippi State, and it was an emotional, personal decision. And to turn around and hire their most successful football coach? No one really tried to persuade Strickland differently. A group of associate athletic directors served as a search committee. There was Laird Veach, now athletic director at Memphis, and Mike Hill, now athletic director at Charlotte. There was Linda Teeler and Steve McLean, both of whom remain on staff at Florida. Strickland also leaned on a pair of retirees for advice along the way. Former University of Florida Athletic Director Jeremy Foley and ex-coach Steve Spurrier. Veach was the leader of the group and they developed an extensive list of candidates but three really stood out. Those three coaches were the three coaches I mentioned earlier. Former Oregon head coach Chip Kelly who was working at ESPN at the time, UCF head coach Scott Frost and Mississippi State head coach Dan Mullen. Kelly became the school's first choice because he was out of football at the time. Eight days after parting ways with Jim McElwain, three search members met with Kelly at his home in New Hampshire. To avoid the media, they flew commercial out of Orlando on a JetBlue flight to Boston and drove to Kelly's home. Kelly fascinated the search committee. Kelly had a spotty social reputation, but they identified with his personality and were impressed by his football knowledge. Beach told Sports Illustrated, It's like you're talking to a football savant. The meeting went over five hours and went so well, Florida hosted Kelly's girlfriend, Jill, a few days later. They wined and dined her, taking her to the popular sushi restaurant, and Teeler even worked out with her at Orange Theory. Things seemed to be going great, but as the days passed after Jill's visit, communication between Florida and Kelly slowed down. The week before Thanksgiving, Kelly called Florida saying, Come see me again, and this time, bring your president. On November 19, 2017, Buddy Martin, a nearly 80-year-old radio host, broadcasted the scoop that Florida and Kelly were in discussions. A first responder at Oakla International Airport about 30 minutes away from Gainesville tipped Martin off about the trip. Martin showed up at Oakla in a baseball cap, white t-shirt, and jacket. As the private jet returning from New Hampshire came to a stop, Martin said on camera, We believe this might be the plane behind us with the University of Florida Brass just back from New Hampshire for a visit with Chip Kelly. Two days later, Kelly removed his name from the coaching search. But that was not the only coach they were talking to at the time. A few days earlier, a few members from the search committee drove to Orlando to meet with Scott Frost two days before the 9-0 UCF Knights played Temple. They were not extremely impressed by Frost, believing he was not ready for this big of a job according to Sports Illustrated. The following day, Strickland texted his old friend, who he hadn't talked to in months, writing, Hey, do you want to talk tomorrow? The person responded, I'd rather wait until next week after the Egg Bowl. On day 23 of the coaching search, two days before Thanksgiving, the search committee found themselves having a midday beer at a local bar. They were waiting to talk to one of their top coaching choices a few days later. A few days after Chip Kelly pulled his name out of the Florida coaching search, Mike Gundy suggested he might be interested. Gundy was known for flirting with jobs to only stay at Oklahoma State with a very nice raise and Strickland knew that. He spoke with Gundy twice by phone, but things didn't go any further. Over at Mississippi State, Athletic Director John Cohen knew before the season he may lose his head coach after Mullen rebuffed a new contract extension and hired agent Jimmy Sexton, who's known for his ability to move coaches across the college football landscape. Cohen received a phone call from his old friend and former boss Strickland in November. After Mississippi State lost to Ole Miss during that year's Egg Bowl, Strickland called Mullen, who was now receiving interest from Tennessee, who had just fired Butch Jones. Strickland told Mullen, don't take the Tennessee job yet. Wait on us. I'll know more tomorrow. The next morning, the search committee got together. The Saturday, Florida played Florida State. They were down to Frost and Dan Mullen. Strickland spoke on the situation saying, It was hard. I was in a situation where I was either going to disappoint a bunch of people in Mississippi that I cared about, or I was not going to be doing the best job for the Florida Gators. 
They spoke with Frost who had just led UCF to an 11-0 record and was the hottest name in the cycle. His alma mater, Nebraska, was also searching for a head coach at the time. The call ended with Frost saying he'd get back to them after a staff meeting, but the call never came. Strickland called his wife at one point, who had a graduate degree from Mississippi State. He told her, how can we take Mississippi State's coach? Is this the right thing to do? This will be hard for us. Her calming voice came through the line, we're going to be fine. The search committee sat in an office in the stadium as Florida played their in-state rivals and around 2.30 p.m. as the game entered the fourth quarter, Strickland called his old friend saying, I want you to come do this. Every offseason, Mullen had fielded phone calls from Miami, Penn State, Michigan, and others, and for one reason or another, the jobs would fall through. This time, it didn't. Dan's wife, Megan, told Sports Illustrated, I've never seen the look in Dan's eyes that I saw when he got the call that day. 16 years, and I've never seen it. I said, Dan, that's it. We're going to Florida. Strickland lost friends over his decision. He received displeasure through texts and emails, and some say he betrayed his own roots and that his reputation was tarnished forever. Strickland also couldn't let the news of the Mullen hiring to break until after church that Sunday due to his family being back in Mississippi for the Thanksgiving break in Starkville. The decision though has paid off for Florida as Mullen became the first coach in FBS history to win two New Year's Six Bowls in each of his first two seasons and led the program to its biggest turnaround in wins from 2017 with four to ten wins in 2018. Mississippi State is 19 and 19 since Mullen left and has its second coach in Mike Leach. Scott Frost would take the head coaching job at his alma mater Nebraska and it has not gone great. Five days later after taking his name out of the Florida coaching search, Chip Kelly was hired by UCLA. Kelly acknowledged that he had the opportunity to coach in the SEC, but it wasn't the right fit. He chose UCLA in part because it's the number one public university in the country. He wanted to coach players serious about both books and ball, he says according to Sports Illustrated. And that's how Dan Mullen ended up as the Florida Gators head coach. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. It was a little different than my usual videos, but I really wanted to talk about this interesting story. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other videos right here. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, remember to embrace the grind.